No uh, shenanigans. No mad lad stuff. Just utter normalcy. Getting out of the city on St. Patrick's Day was a nightmare, but more on that later. Hassan, look! After a short bike ride across Hoboken, we've made it to the train station. We have enough time to buy tickets and get to our train. Our train's at 4.07. Ah, it's 4.07. I have 4.01 because that was the train out of the pen. Ah, okay. Coming now. They replaced the bar with a food court, or is the bar over there? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've been here. I think this is where the bar was. Yeah. This is an ATM, not a ticket machine. Yeah. I fell for that too for a second. Huh. Um, four oh seven, Fort Jervis, SEC via Bergen County. There is no time to enjoy it, but this here is the beautiful waiting room at Hoboken Terminal. On board the train, you can see we're very proud of how we tied up our bikes. All right, history time. Back in the day, there were three railroads that built New York to Chicago main lines. First, we have the New York Central, who had the fastest route, connecting New York and Chicago in just 15 and a half hours on their flagship 20th Century Limited, leaving from Grand Central Terminal. Of the three, this is the only one that you can still ride pretty much end to end today on Amtrak's Lakeshore Limited. Next up, we have the Pennsylvania Railroad's main line. With their four track main line, they were able to provide the most frequent service in their flagship train, Broadway Limited, completed the journey in just 16 hours from New York Penn Station. Today, you can ride Amtrak's Pennsylvania along this route as far as Pittsburgh. And finally, we have our underdogs, the Erie Railroad, who built a main line that somehow manages to avoid every major city between New York and Chicago. Unable to compete with speed or frequency, the flagship Erie Limited was scheduled to take 20 hours, the Erie Railroad focused their efforts on punctuality instead, which they achieved through incredibly fast engine swaps in places like Port Jervis. And advertising the scenery of their rural route. Trains left from Pavonia Terminal in Jersey City, not Manhattan. Today you can ride this route more or less only as far as Port Jervis on Metro North's Port Jervis line, a commuter route which is operated by New Jersey Transit. And that's exactly what we're doing. Suffern is the first stop in New York and the last New Jersey Transit station. After this point, all stations are managed by Metro North. Oh look, it's the Erie Lackawanna Heritage Unit. How fitting. Getting out of the city on St. Patrick's Day was a nightmare. I was initially gonna take the F train to the path, but after the entire IND had a meltdown, I only got as far as Queens Plaza before abandoning the subway altogether and just biking across the bridge and over to the ferry, when, of course, I ran into the St. Patrick's Day parade. Luckily, I made it to the ferry. I gave myself two hours and only made it 10 minutes before our train. Luckily, we got out of town before things got real ugly with the day's festivities. Built in 1907, the Moodna Viaduct is the longest and tallest active rail viaduct east of the Mississippi.
Yeah. Yeah. I'm sending this to Micah. Where the heck are you? Time to head down that way. This here is the original Port Jervis station built by the Erie Railroad. And our hotel, I believe, is this building on the left, which was also built by the Erie Railroad. There we go. Yeah, this was an annoying door. All right, time to check out our hotel room. Oh, wow. So uh, Hassan, what did you discover over here? We have the breaker box for the entire building in our room. AC receptacles, lights, yada, yada, yada. We got the whole building down here. This is incredible. Absolutely phenomenal. Got good old steam heat. Great view of the church. We have a train on the wall. Hell yeah, hell yeah. We have an air conditioner. It's true, we do. That, that, and look, we have a view of the old train station and the mountain. And a huge TV. For and a reason. huge TV. <laughs> that clock is not adjusted for daylight savings. So we decided to eat dinner at a local Indian restaurant called Front Street Cafe that actually ended up being super good and they had Jeopardy on TV. Then we had breakfast at the local diner. I meant to get a shot of the synagogue. This is Hawk's Nest, probably the highlight of our bike ride. I wish I brought my GoPro to show you how beautiful it was riding here. This does not inspire confidence. Okay, so you know how tired I am? I mixed up penne and linguine. I know they're different, but how did I mix them up? That's how tired I am. So for context, um, we've biked all the way from Port Jervis. We're trying, we're not even done biking yet. We're trying to get to this Roebling's Aqueduct bridge over the Delaware River and we're we've uh, we're we're 19.6 miles and 1200 feet of elevation gain in and we That's are as high as the Empire State Building y'all completely exhausted so we are stopped to eat food and the port I have no idea how you're talking and not eating at this place are giant so um, it's gonna be this is a good place to stop oldest cable suspension bridge in the country Roebling aqueduct bridge used to carry water but now you can it's got a road hard to see but there's a bunch of uh, birds of prey circling above this bridge here um they might be eagles all right okay the car's waiting for us i appreciate that did you notice back there the cable the, the had a glass window in the frame so you could see the cable yeah Welcome to Pennsylvania, Aaron. Pursue your happiness. After 20 miles, we made it back to the Erie Main Line. 24 miles. 24 miles. We made it back to the Erie Main Line. Yes. <laughs> Erie boys.
So there's no official welcome to New York sign once you cross over into New York. There is a sign saying the state law that you can't use your phone while driving, but also there's this house with a big banner for Trump and a Confederate flag and a POW MIA flag. Also, they have a toilet in their front yard. Welcome to New York, baby. Bringing you another Erie Boys moment. We have this lovely bridge on the Erie Main Line over the Lax Sawana River, I wanna say. Um, yeah, Erie Boys, Erie Railroad knows how to build viaducts and bridges. Erie Boy. So we're at the inn in Lackawaxa. After the sunset, we tried to hitchhike to get back to Port Jervis. And we stood there for almost an hour and only one car stopped for us and they told us that they couldn't help us because they had a wheelchair in the back. But they did tell us to go to the inn um, across the bridge. So we walked back across the bridge, we went to the inn, we're at the inn, and we asked the bartender if she could help us, and she said after she gets off her shift around 9, 9.30, um, and then she gave us, she asked if we wanted anything, we got some tea, she told us to play pool, uh, there's someone else playing pool, so now we're just drinking tea um, <laughs> in a bar in a bar um, to normal normal behavior um, no and shenanigans the, no mad mad stuff just utter normal and um, basically we're going uh, the owner of the inn came up to us and told us that he got he's got a truck that he, he's gonna help us with. He's gonna, in a bit, he'll load up the bikes for us and take us back. No. Wait, you're telling me an innkeeper did not turn us away? <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Yeah, anyway. It's Eerie Boys! It is 11, 11 p.m. and we finally made it back to our hotel in Port Jervis. <laughs> Hooray. Erie Boys, day three. We're, we're Holy shit, it is day three. Eating breakfast at um, a Geo's. Geo's Bakery here in Port Jervis. Um, and I just noticed that across the street, this building with the bike shop. Um, the windows are all uneven. I'm a little bit concerned about the structural integrity of this building. Um, yeah. All right. Here we boy out. So um, I accidentally ordered hash browns when I meant to get home fries. So now I'm living with the consequences. All right, Erie boy out. Yep. There was a time, and it was not long ago, that there was no dragon pearl jasmine. Now, the world is a better place. And now we wait a few minutes. This is a gun store with a sign saying that they sell local honey. This, this guy right here tried to walk in to see if he could buy honey. And even though the door was unlocked, 
they told him it was closed. <laughs> Granted, the hours on the door do say they're closed on Sundays, but it is very odd that the lights are on and they're in there and the door is unlocked if they're closed. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, brown guy walks into a gun shop and they say it's closed. <laughs> You can take with that what you will. Yeah. So you might be wondering, Aaron and Hassan, what are you guys doing under this highway um, in a cemetery? Well, down this way, you will notice this weird stone box. Uh, if you look, once you get closer, You'll probably be able to read on it that it says Tri-States Monument. This here is where New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey come together. And now I will step into all three states at once. A fantastic view of the Delaware River, though, I have to say. Um, and the Neversink River, which branches off of the Delaware right here. All the feedback I have to offer right now is a weather report. It is kind of nippy, a little cold. I am very familiar with the Neversink River. It's the river that runs um, by my the camp that I worked at. Oh look, some ducks! Hassan is an absolute mad lad. It is below freezing and he is wearing a nothing but a polo shirt. Um, but anyway, who needs Four Corners USA when you can stand on this weird stone box under a highway and be in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, the three greatest states in the Union at the same time. Eerie boys. Eerie boys! Well, we're at the bowling alley. It used to have a cool neon sign that you could see from Google Street View, but it doesn't anymore. It's very retro style. And yeah. Oh, man. Pennsylvania, which is across the river from Fort Jervis at the restaurant that we were recommended to go to by the waitress at the Front Street Cafe, which was the Indian restaurant we went to on the first night. And so we cross state lines with food. Let this, let this reflect that this is interstate commerce right here. We are benefiting economies across state lines. Let the federal government know that you're okay. a vital asset to the... Yeah, feel free to cut this out on your video. Okay. We're on the Pennsylvania side, about to cross the bridge. This sign is not on the New York side, so when we came over, we rode in the road. Um, it's an open grate roadway, which isn't very fun to bike across, but it was all right. I think cyclists should be allowed to use it. Anyway, there's also a sign here telling us this is the Mid-Delaware Bridge. Uh, history. This is the largest operational electric turntable, or electric railroad turntable, I guess, in the US, I think. Yeah, that is correct. Um, there's also a bunch of old other railroad equipment here. 
We may be the Eerie Boys, but these here, these are the Eerie Men. Uh, the museum isn't open until in this season, so we can't go in there, but I mean, we can still, certainly we can walk around. Oh, it's locked. Oh, it's locked. Mm -hmm. It certainly feels like trespassing in an active rail yard, but it's not. Eerie boys. Some nice looking murals of steam trains on this building. We've made it back to the station, and now we're gonna wait for the train back to New Hoboken. And we're going home. Once again, crossing the absolutely stunning Moodna Viaduct. through Patterson, my favorite city in New Jersey. That there on the left is the original Erie Main Line, which um, is currently what's left of it's just a freight spur um, that went through Passaic. However, nowadays, we, ever since the 1950s, I want to say, uh, this line was rerouted over the Delaware Lackawanna Western's Boonton, original Boonton line, uh, which is where we are right now on the Boonton line from here all the way to Hoboken. At last, the New York skyline. So that concludes our incredible weekend. See you next week for another video.